All right, there's a lot of excitement coming into the Olympic Games for about 65 kilograms, and everyone agrees. This is the deepest, this is the best weight at the Olympic Games in men's freestyle. 65 is 143 and a half pounds. And for Team USA, we're gonna have Zane Rutherford. He is the representative for America at the Olympic Games. I'm gonna get into the biggest threats and the reasons why I think these particular wrestlers pose the biggest threat to Zane Rutherford. I'm gonna give you the top three, but I'm gonna give you, try to give you a good sense of the entire bracket. So starting with number three, we've got Ismail Musakayev of Hungary. Man, if you've watched this guy, you know he's one of my favorite wrestlers and he is many people's favorite wrestlers. We like to say around here, he's your favorite wrestler's favorite wrestler. This guy is so fun to watch, not only for his incredible speed, also his antics. This is a guy who up until 2023 was more known for his horrible gas tank. I mean, the worst I've ever seen, bar none. Name a wrestler with a bad gas tank at a high level, Musukayev's was way worse. But he figured it out in 2023 and he ends up winning the world championships and he went through a, a murderous side. He had to beat Amazad of Iran. He had to beat Mamadov of Russia. This was a really, really tough weight class and he navigated it. He did a great job there. And now what makes him an interesting matchup. Now you may be confused because Musakayev was actually my pick to win this weight class at 65, but I actually like the matchup for Zane because I feel like for six minutes, Zane Rutherford is, maybe the toughest guy at this weight class to wrestle. From a physicality, pace, just in your face standpoint, Zane Rutherford has that, maybe more than any other wrestler here. So I feel like we're gonna last six minutes with Musakai. If he's not gonna blow us out of the water and, and, and tag Zane Rutherford. And if we're around the last minute or two, I don't think anyone can bring the pace like Zane. I think it's actually still a decent matchup. Although I'm not, ex I'm not doing backflips if that's who Zane's wrestling. But I will say, I think the gas tank disparity could favor Zane. Now, this guy has lightning quick reattacks. He has incredible speed to the leg, both sides, explosiveness. He can wrestle upper body as well. Musakayev is a really complete package when his, when his pace is there. But he's the number three for me in the deepest weight class in men's freestyle. Number two, Tolga Tumur Ochir of Mongolia. This is someone that you maybe have seen Zane Rutherford wrestle. If you were following Rutherford's run to the uh, Olympic qualifier tournament, the last chance qualifier, this was who Zane actually lost to. It was Zane wrestled seven matches. He won six of them. He lost to Toga of Mongolia. This guy wrestles a ton out of over under positions. He can, he's not trying to slow it down because of the lack of pace, but he slows the matches down because so much of the match he tries to wrestle in these control ties. And out of there, he's very good upper body. He has a, a, a world-class arm spin. He hits on just about everybody and he hit it on Zane. Zane had the lead late in the match, but uh, Tolga was able to fire a double, got a late score and ended up winning the match. This is a winnable match for Zane. Anyone who watched that match knows he can win it. He's right there to, to beat someone like Tolga. But one thing that makes it tough is you're not gonna wear this guy out. He's really tough to open up. There's very, very few openings that Tolga's gonna give you. And I think someone that wrestles a super controlled style is gonna be a tough matchup for Zane, just because he's a guy that wants to mix it up and get in a lot of exchanges. And Tolga has the goods to kind of slow a lot of that down. And he's a guy with wins over Zane Rutherford. He's beaten Musakayev in the past. Although that's, Musakayev is the best win for a lot of wrestlers because back in the day, he was dropping all kinds of matches for fatigue reasons. And he's also beaten Amazad, he's beaten Zane. So he's beaten a lot of really great wrestlers, uh, has Tolga, so he's number two. But number one for me is Amazad of Iran. This is someone who we saw beat Yanni in the world finals in 2022. He's right there amongst the best in the world. He, was actually, he actually did not place last year, which was a surprise, but he lost to Musakayev on the top side. And then the bronze match, he lost to the great Mamadov of Russia. Now Mamadov, you're wondering why he's not on this list. He's actually not wrestling at the Olympic Games. He had the opportunity to, uh, even though many of the Russians were banned, Russia said, we're not going. And then Mamadov eventually acquiesced and said, okay, I'm not going either. So Mamadov's out of the mix. So Amazad of Iran is the guy. He's really young. He's really good. He wrestles like a, a pretty conventional Iranian wrestler. He also wants to be in those underhooks, uh, over under or an underhook. He likes to wrestle out of those positions. Great go behinds. Uh, underrated leg attacks. He's got a good high crotch, a good single leg. 
he's very complete. He is someone that I don't see Zane um, gassing out, wearing out. Zane will have to beat him attack for attack. And uh, if you watch his match against Yanni, you may get a little nervous because the guy's really good and he kind of ends up after an opening exchange where it's back and forth, back and forth. Almazak kind of pulls away with it. But Yanni was taking a lot of Aaron shots in that match and giving up a lot of easy go-behinds. And I don't see that being the case for Zane. So I think this is a winnable match. I think for most wrestling prognosticators, the experts in international wrestling, now view Amazad as the favorite to win this weight class. He's very complete. He's done this before, and his hit list is insane. He's beaten Musakayev. He's beaten Haji Aliyev, who is a, a legend of the sport at this point. As I mentioned, he's beaten Yanni. He beat Tolga Tumorochir, the number two. He's beaten Bajrang Punya, a perennial medalist at the world and Olympic level. So... This is a guy who's beaten the best, and he's beaten them kind of repeatedly. He consistently goes to the toughest tournaments and wins them. And we, we like Zane's grit, right? And Amazad's got that too. And, and all these guys too uh, do to a degree. But I feel like for Zane, a part of what we saw at the, the last chance qualifiers, guys just could not stay on the mat with him for six minutes. He was just wearing them out, wearing them down to a pulp. And, you know, I think that is a little bit um, kind of limiting what Zane is. He's way more than that. We've seen the, the leg attacks have improved incredibly. And Zane even talked about this in my interview with him. Uh, but for me, Amazad is the toughest matchup for Zane Rutherford. But there's a lot of other really tough guys I'm going to mention here as well. Um, but before I get into that, I want to mention that Zane Rutherford is unseeded at this weight class. He's a returning world champion, but no seed. So he's going to be randomly drawn into one of the top eight seeds. So the way they do it at the Olympics, they seed the top eight, and then they're going to, you're going to get put randomly against one of those eight-seeded wrestlers. So he could have Amazad in round one. He could have Tamuro Chir round one or Musakayev. All three of these guys I, I named are seeded. Amazad's the two, Musakayev's the three, and Tolga is the eight. Okay, now there's also Haji Aliyev. He is a multiple world and Olympic medalist. This guy, I feel like everyone's forgetting him, and it, I understand why. Haji, he takes some losses, right? He takes losses during the season. But at the Olympics, this guy just shows up. He was, almost won it in 2021, was a point away from winning that one against Odaguru of Japan. He'll be the sixth seed. Sebastian Rivera of America, but representing Puerto Rico, is the fourth seed. He's a returning world silver medalist. This guy got second last year to Musakayev. He beat Tavanian, who is actually the top seed here at 65 kilograms. Tavani is the top seed, but I feel like he's not really viewed as the number one guy like an Amazad, a Toga, or, uh, or a Musakayev. Um, then you have Kiyuka of Japan, who's kind of a newcomer to the, to the scene, but this guy beat Musakayev this year. Um, and then you have Ernie Akhmadaliyev. This guy's a world silver medalist, really unique style, very upper body. He's not going to fire off a lot of leg attacks, but he can hit a lot of counter scores, he can go upper body, and he will fire when he has to go. So that's just some of the, the top contenders. And for, for Zane Rutherford, you know, you if you're a fan of, of USA Wrestling and Zane Rutherford, you can get kind of like you know, a little bit negative about how he fits in this weight class. But it's a 16-man bracket, and you only have to beat four of these guys to be the Olympic champion. It's not some gauntlet. You don't, you're not lining them up round robin. And you never know how he's going to fall. But if you look at this bracket... With Amazad 2 and Musakayev 3, if Zayn can land on that top side, it, it could be a very, very advantageous draw for Zayn Rutherford. So I'm still very excited to see Zayn at the Olympics. This is a tough weight class. He can medal and he can win. And I think there's a ton of reasons to, to believe that. There's a lot of data. The guy is a returning world champion at 70 kilograms. Really, really tough to do, and he's proven. And the, one of the big questions for Zane is, how does he look at this weight down at 143 and a half? He looked awesome at the last qualifier, and I feel like Zane's going to have a really good result. But these are the top three. I want to know what are your top three? Who are the biggest threats to knock off Zane at the Olympics?